This question is about electricity, and more specifically, it's about drift speed. So we're given the fact that we have this wire here. And in this wire, you have a cross-sectional area. So we could sort of draw some sort of, um, you know, some sort of cross-sectional area here. And this one right here is going to be twice that. In other words, the area of x is whatever that is. That's the cross-sectional area. Remember, we're trying to draw this in 3D, right? But the area of y, we're told that it's double that of x. So in other words, we can say it's 2ax. So that might be important. Now we're told that at x, the current is i, and the drift speed is called v. And at y, they're basically saying, what is the current and drift speed at y? That's what they want. They want to know what's the current and what's the drift speed at this point. So uh, first of all, it helps to know a little bit about current. Current is defined, remember, as just the... Let's write it down, maybe. The current is just defined as the number of charges per second. And it turns out, even if uh, the current is right over here, or even if it has a bigger area to go in, the current actually won't change. There'll still be the same number of charges per second. They may be spread out, but there's still the same number going through this piece. It'll still be the same number, even though they sit on me spread out, these little charges. But um, it's going to be the same. So in this case right here, that's the current... Um, if we called the current i, then the drift speed y, that'll be the same. So that'll be important here, okay? So we'll say this, the current is the same. That'll be important. So we'll put that here, the current, same. That means you can cross off some of the choices, right? Uh, same, whoops, I shouldn't say same, actually. Instead of saying same, I'll actually write it down. Same meant i. Now let's do the other one. Drift speed, oh God, what's that? Even if you're not sure how to use this stuff, you can always go and find an equation for drift speed. We have an equation for it in your data booklet. You might not use it very often, but it goes like this. I equals N-A-V-Q. So what I always like to do is when we have a situation where you have some case going on here and then you have other things changed, I always like to do this as a ratio question. Which means first I always write down the equation that governs what I'm looking at. So in this case, it's this one here. Okay, that's important. And what I like to do then is write down an equation for the new thing. In this case right here, I can call it, um, I don't know, let's call it I with a subscript Y. Let's just say. Maybe I'll do it in a different color. Just to make it a little bit easier to separate different ideas. So maybe I'll make it uh, purple. So let's just say, so we have I, Y. So at y, let's see, it would be n, the same number, that hasn't changed, uh, times a y times v, I guess we could say with a little y, I guess we could say that, v y, times q. And then what you can do then is you can always just take this equation then and then divide it by the initial equation. So that's how I always do these. That's, how, that's where the ratio comes in, uh, v q. Now, if this area right here was called AX, then I guess I could call it AX. You know, I could call it that. And this here could be called, uh, that's just called V, that's just called I. That's how they were defined. So let's now fill in the things that I know. I know that I, Y over I, I know that these two right here are the same. Because they're the same, that means they can cross off. So something over itself gives you one. So that's kind of nice. We have one equals. Now the ends cancel out. And the Q's cancel out. That's even nice. And instead of AY, I'm going to put in 2AX, because I know that that's that value. Divide that by AX. And then I have VY over V, the initial velocity uh, at X. So then if I do this, then, uh, well, I can cross off the AX's. That makes it a lot easier. And I can put the 2 over on the other side. So I have 1 over 2 equals vy over v. If I want to get vy by itself, what do I do? I would move the v on top, so I would have v over 2. This right here would be my answer. So my drift speed at y is going to be v over 2. So then you just have to find which choice is that. Turns out, because it's multiple choice, this one here is b. So that's how you do that one. So again, these kind of questions, they might seem really tough, especially if you don't know anything about drift speed. But I would argue you can actually solve this question without really knowing much about drift speed. You just have to know that here is your equation that contains drift speed. As long as you knew that, you can sort of work it out. You did have to know about the definition of current in order to know that it was the same. But see, we can do this.